Howdy, chillins. Today we're going to be looking at a problem with optimization. Now, optimization means that we're trying to make something the best way as possible. Okay, now sometimes optimization is going to be looking for a maximum value. Sometimes it's going to be looking for a minimum value, right? Maximum is good if we're looking for something that's the biggest and the best. Minimum is good if we're looking for, say, the least amount of money that we need to spend on something. All right, so that's kind of what we're looking at today. So let's look at a couple of different examples. This video will be the first one. We've got an industrial shed with a total floor space of 600 meters squared divided into three rectangular rooms of equal size. The walls will cost $60 per meter to build. So what dimensions should the shed have to minimize the cost of the walls? Okay, so we're looking for trying to get this area and having three rooms, but trying to spend the least amount of money as possible. Okay, so first thing we should do is draw a picture. Now this is an aerial view of the industrial shed. And so it's got three rectangular rooms that are all the same size which means these all have to be equal, and then these all have to be equal, right? Okay, so once we have our picture and we understand what's happening, then usually the next thing is that we're going to write an equation that somehow relates the information that we have to what we want. Now, it's going to cost me $60 per meter for the walls. And so if it's going to cost me $60 per meter, obviously I'm going to try to minimize the length of the walls that I use. Or in other words, the perimeters need to be the smallest as possible. So maybe what we need to do is write an equation that gives us the total length of the walls. Okay, so I'm going to go L equals, now I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 that have a value of, say, x. And so that's going to be six x's. And then I'm going to have these four that are all the same. And so it looks like I got four. I just said that. So we got plus four y's. OK? Now, we want the total floor space to be 600 meters squared. That means that the area of the floor, so that would be 3x, times y, the base times the height. Okay, now the reason why we need two equations is because we really only want to have the variable that we're optimizing and then one variable that's going to cause that to change. Two variables are going to be a problem because I can't really put that in a graph or in a single one variable equation. And so at this point, I need to put in 600 meters squared for the area. And now I need to solve for one of the variables. It doesn't really matter which one you solve for, but either way is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for y because I don't know why. It's just y. So I'm just going to divide by 3x, which is going to give me 200 over x equals y. All right, so now I can take this and I can plug it into my other equation. So now I'm going to have one equation for the length of the walls, that's equal to 6x plus 4 times 200 over x, right? So now from this point, what I need to do is go ahead and see if I can minimize that length in such a way that it will give me what I want. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this. All right, so we're going to simplify it to L equals 6x plus 800 over x. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my calculator now. Okay, now actually, no, let's not use our calculator. If I want to to optimize this, that means I need either the maximum or the minimum, in this case the maximum, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to find the derivative. So let's go derivative equals 6 plus, now remember this one is 800x to the negative 1. So if I've got 800x to the negative 1, I'm going to put negative 1 in the front. So this is actually going to be a minus 
800 x to the negative 2. All right, so I've got L prime equals 6 minus 800 over x squared. So now I'm looking for the place where this is equal to 0. All right, because when the derivative is equal to 0, that means that I'm at a maximum or a minimum. So let's solve. Let's put 0 in for the derivative. We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. So I'm going to have negative 6 equals negative 800 over x squared. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by a negative x squared. And so that is going to end up giving me, yep, that's right, 6x squared equals 800. We'll divide both sides by 6. So x squared equals, well, Let's just reduce that, 200 over 3, and then we're going to take the square root to get x by itself. So x equals plus or minus root 200 over 3. Now, that means I got two places where I have a derivative of 0, a maximum or a minimum. Now, that's all right, but we have to recognize that x is a length, right? And so we don't want x to be negative. So x needs to be positive. So x in this case is going to be root of 200 over 3. Now, something that we need to check before we finish this problem is we need to actually make sure that this is what we want it to be. We want this to be a minimum, right? We want this to minimize the cost of our walls. And so to do that, we're actually going to do the second derivative because we need to know at this point, is this a minimum or is it a maximum? Is it concave up or is it concave down? So we're going to take the second derivative. So let's take this. We're going to take the second derivative, which is L double prime. So I'm going to take the negative 2, put it in front. So that's going to give me 2 times 800x to the negative 3, right? And so that's equal to 1,600 over x cubed. Now we note that when my x value is positive, if I put a positive number in here, that's going to give me a positive second derivative. And if that's positive, that means it is concave up, which means that I have a minimum. And so at this, it's a minimum. If this had been negative, if we put in the negative value for x, then when I put in a negative, 1,600 divided by a negative would give me negative, which means it's concave down, which means that's actually a maximum at the x equals negative. We already said that's not important because we need the positive anyway. So there you go. We found out that yes, it is actually a minimum. Secondly, we found out that this is the value of x. We can now take that and plug it back into x and solve for y. So we can do that any place in either of those two equations. So if you go ahead and plug those in, I'll let you kind of do that on your own. Hopefully, you end up getting in the end that x equals 11.547 and that y equals about 17.321. Go ahead and check it on your own. Make sure you get those two numbers. And there we go.